In this video, we're going to have a look at the different levels of economic integration, whether it's on a regional or a global scale. And as you can see by this diagram here, there are a number of different levels that we're going to look at. And we're going to start with the most narrow focused, uh, which is the free trade area, and then work our way out of this circle until we get to the highest level of economic integration, which is the political union. And as I say, we'll give you some examples and hopefully illustrate some of the key differences here. The most basic level of economic integration is a free trade area. This is where all barriers to the trade of goods and services amongst the countries that are involved in this free tra trade area are removed. Uh, however, each country is still allowed to determine its own trade policies in relation to non-members, that is, countries that are not involved in the free trade area. So a couple of examples here are the European Free Trade Association, or EFTA, uh, which comprises Norway, Iceland, Switzerland, and the magnificent country of Liechtenstein, which is famous for a lot of things, including uh, being once tried to be rented by Snoop Dogg that is the entire country we're talking about here, just for a video shoot. And in fact, the only reason they really, or not the only, but the main reason they actually said no is just because you needed to give us a little bit more warning. Otherwise, all good, Snoop Dogg, whatever you say. Not your usual country. Lichten Giant, a total area of only 160 square kilometers, so it is very tiny, and was attempted to be rented out for a music video. NAFTA is another key example here, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which comprises the US, Canada, and Mexico. So the key takeaway of a free trade area is it is quite basic. You certainly remove those key barriers to trade, the impediments such as tariffs and import quotas, uh, but Certainly, the uh, countries involved in that particular free trade area do have a lot of freedom and autonomy to determine their own uh, external trade policies with non-members. The next level up of economic integration is a customs union. Now this is where we eliminate the trade barriers, like in a tr free trade area, uh, but also now adopt a common external trade policy. So it's the next level up here where you're adding that external trade policy that is shared amongst all of the member countries uh, on top of the removal of those trade barriers. So an example here is the Andean community, which is uh, uh, located in South America, comprising Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador and Peru, who are well known for a lot of things, including certain plant-based products. The next level up is a common market. So this has no barriers to trade between member countries, uh, that common external trade policy, and on top of that adds the free movement of factors of production. Uh, which includes obviously machinery, equipment, and in some cases labor. So an example here would be Mercosur, which is a uh, free trade uh, agreement that comprises Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay, so some of the key South American countries there as well. So you, you can hopefully already see that each of these levels of economic integration builds on the previous one and simply adds additional layers uh, of requirements for them. Moving up now, and the fourth level of economic integration is an economic union. Now this is where you have the free flow of products and factors of production between members, that common external trade policy, but also now adding a common currency, a harmonized tax rate, and also a common monetary and fiscal policy. So a good example here is the European Union, which until very recently involved countries like Germany, and the uh, and Great Britain. Of course, Germany still remains, but Britain through Brexit has opted to leave. Uh, and when you look at photos like the one there between the former British Prime Minister David Cameron and the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, just being weird together, you don't wonder why, perhaps. And why are they just weird politicians like that? Anyway, the key point here is that you're adding uh, these key economic factors on top of those basic level things outlined on our previous slides. So now you have that consistent tax rate across all the countries within it. And in most cases, that common currency. And obviously, the European Union has adopted the euro as its common currency here as well. The final and highest level of economic integration is a political union. So this involves, on top of all the other things involved with an economic union in the lower levels here, adds a central political apparatus that coordinates the economic, social and also foreign policy of the member 
countries. Now, as it stands at the moment, the EU is at least headed toward at least partial political union. It was designed so that ultimately it would uh, become a polit partial political union. And there is a governing body of sorts uh, within the EU where you have representatives from each of the different member countries who do sit there and make some key political decisions. But it isn't a political union in the same way that the United States is a political union. Of course, previously, the United States, which is exactly wh why the name is or where the name is derived from, used to be a collection of separate individual states who were effectively governing themselves as countries, who then were brought together to form the United States, exactly hence the name. So they are a true example of a political economy, and, and it'll be interesting to see whether the European Union does eventually head down that path as well, where you have actually a single country in effect uh, within the EU. Next, on the next few videos, we're going to go through some of the key regional trading blocks today. So some of the ones that you guys as international business managers of the future will actually be dealing with and which are literally affecting Australia and other parts of the world today. So we're going to look at some of the key ones like the European Union, like NAFTA, MACOSA, Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN, the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC, and the Trans Pacific Partnership. And as I said, we'll talk about those in the next few videos.